High Grade Universal Century Gundam EZ-8. Hey, what's up again everybody? It's Robert184, 2Rs2Bs, Gundam.TK, and sometimes you can take your overpowered Psycho Frames and your flashy Hathaway's Flash Cassis and Penelope's, and you just want to go old school here, and in terms of simple, grounded, and realistic, and I don't think there's a better adjective than grounded, I don't know if it's going to be to this high grade EZ-8 here. It's been long awaited from the 08th MS team. April 2013 release, 1600 Japanese yen. It's from Bandai, of course, as you can see the name written in English and Japanese, the most important letter being the G there for ground and from the 08th MS team in the long running HGUC line. This is long awaited number 155. And don't forget that you can buy this kit and so much more great stuff from the good folks at Hobby Link Japan, and there's full links down below in the description. For those of you that have been watching my channel over the years, and a big thank you, of course, for that, you know that my first Gundam series was the 08 MS Team, and even though I have a very funny and dark secret to reveal about the 08 MS Team, I'll probably throw that into the verdict. For me, the Gundam EZ-8 and the Ground Gundam, of course, are going to have a special place in my heart as the first leads that I ever saw. Objectively, if I look at the EZ-8, I'd say this is probably the ugliest and the least spectacular of all the lead Gundams, and yet sometimes that's part of the appeal, and when you get to go and look at all the features, especially built in with the teamwork, that Bandai is even going to be allowed to recreate very easily with Gunpla. Can't wait to see how this all goes. This has been a long-awaited kit, not just by me, but a lots of L-Wait MS fans out there. As you can see, the stretch has been from 2007 since we got the original Ground Gundam there, and you'd think that it would be an easy swap to get the easy out, but it's been six long years. If you take a look here, this is 1500 yen, so 100 yen less, and it's going to have some cool interchangeable parts there, like the old hiker's backpack. But even better for squad building was in 2009 September for 2200 yen was the Ground War set, which basically is going to give you the same Ground Gundam you've already seen, with a whole bunch of extras, including some cool looking tanks there, little tiny figures, and... Very importantly, a ground gym head, which you can go use to jazz up the old school 1144th, or just add it onto here, and actually go and recreate the team as they went and fought. Definitely a great set, and more and more tempting, especially with this guy. And though it was a long wait for the high grade Universal Century, the Master Grade came out very early in the line, May 2000 for 3000 yen here, for my very first gunpla ever, and yes, it's a big deal, he can kneel. And the reason why the wait was longer than I would have expected is just because in October, 3,000 yen, you get the EZ-8, which is going to have a lot of similarities in terms of the plastic runners that make up the kit. But ah yes, the fateful day here as you go back to the 1144th kits from 1996. I remember walking into my first Gunpla store in Japan and saying I want the Ground Gundam, having just seen the OVA, and they said, well, you can have this two-pack. And actually, I think it was sold out, so then they said, what about the MG? And I said, well... When you see this price, and I didn't care for Zaku's, I got my MG, and I've never looked back. The only thing is, there's some other cool ones here that we'd love to see in HGUC. But to kick off the box tour, who can ignore this incredible cover here? The EZ-8 in all of its unspectacular glory there, with an 08 there on the shield, as you can see. But even more importantly, over there, you've got a ground Gundam with a gym head down there, a ground gym, and a regular ground Gundam hidden with the big guns back there. Shiro and crew, they are ready to go to war anytime. For the side of the box now, nostalgia aside, yes, this is a pretty dopey looking Gundam, but then again, it's got that realistic military feel to it. 08 there, and it's got some neat colors there between the blue and the off-white. Information about its development from the ground Gundam, which of course had never been mentioned in the One Year War, but why not retcon it back in and check out that CG art there, Shiro. And yes, I'm getting paged by my age system. Shiro knows how to do it, probably a lot better than Flit, Asim, and Keo, perhaps put together. With the stats over here, noticeably 18 meter head height down there, and it's going to come with a 100 millimeter machine gun and a beam rifle to go along with the standard beam sabers. But on to the good stuff now. The action poses are going to be shown off well with an action base 2 under there. Yes, this kneeling feature. The master grade can do it, barely, poorly is probably a better adjective. But in this case, he's going to look pretty spectacular. Look at the movement that they're going to be building into the shoulders and into the feet. And not to mention the fact that they've got action bases included in the planning here makes it for some spectacular options. And it's going to be neat to see. They're talking about a parachute pack belt there that seems to be running around the back. It's going to be sort of interesting to see that in practice. 
The weapon details here, we get to see the machine gun, it's got some white parts down there, and the beam rifle is going to be a mix of white and grey, we'll see how that actually is reflected. The beam saber is going to be dull and hopefully it's going to actually fit in that leg pocket there. The shield, as long as it's got an 08 seal on it, I'm happy. And how about that for the parachute pack? This is something I'm a big fan of. If you go and buy the MG, you're going to get the same backpack for the EZ-8 in the ground. Well, in this case, you get some variety, and why not go swap them off as you please? And it's going to be very interesting to pop off that white piece on the chest and see just how well those inner details are going to be recreated, or if this is pro-painting trickery. And over here, they're talking about the recreation of it in 1144th 3D form, but you've got to be a little bit wary because we've already seen that pro-painting trickery over there. And this one, they're going to be very zoomed out, showing off the Goof Custom. I mean, that's spectacular to recreate that scene. However, it doesn't show a lot of confidence as he's going to be looking pretty dull there without any lining and that white. We'll have to see how it works out in practice, but definitely the head is looking like a little bit of a white blob as is. Enough of the outside of the box, it's time to go in... What's this? Well, besides the white, the off-white catching the eye, how about this? Gunpla TV, Ryan and Sid, thank you very much for this. Yes, I don't have enough gems and I don't have enough just regular grunts. This is going to be a lot of fun to go and shoot up, I think. Well, I'm just talking in diorama style. With the inside giving you the off-white grey inner frame down there, the all-important decals with that big 08, a nice green there for the parachute, blue for the feet, not too many regular seals, and it's got some two dual layers there for the eyes, which is a good thing. Beam sabers, chunks of grey for the shield and for the backpack to go along with a big plate of white and an interesting belt through there, and the manual. Out of the bags, the thing that caught my eye the most is if you go and take a look at these over here, they're all going to be saying Gundam Easy 8 You'd figure that with the Master Grade we saw a lot of similarities in the inner frame here, not showing at least on the labeled parts of the parts. So for those of you that have built the regular ground, I'd love to hear from you. But look at these details here that are going to be built into the weapons there. The shield part is looking good, as is that chest cover which needs to happen. The all-white face has some decent details there and lots of lining opportunities. And how about that for your butter knife holders? And whereas the regular ground Gundam had some red feet on a four-color A-plate, as there was the style in the time, it looks like they're going to be doing separate colors from here on in, or at least the majority of new kits, it seems. You've got your feet there in blue and the front and back of the chest with the all-important uh, all important dig it into the ground shield bottom there with an 08 above it. And when you go and take a look at this, it's going to be somewhat disappointing. You've always got to be careful that when you look at the box tour, they're going to be telling you, yes, the details are incredible and they are carved very well. However, you're going to have to go and paint that up, but it looks like you can go and add a gray piece down there, so even for lazy modelers like me, but how about the parachute here? B2, it's labeled. Lots of lining options and overall just a nice military green. Definitely fitting this theme. A1 and A2 are going to be similar here for about a quarter of the plates. And this is going to give you some more nice details there. As you get to see some of the parts of the feet, the side skirts there, and the all-important belt them on shoulders. C1 and C2 both say Easy 8 here. And if you take off C2 for all the parallel parts, you can see some thrusters and things like that. But of a lot more interest are going to be the regular parts. As you can see, some more part for the guns down there. And I love the fact that the parachute is not just going to be a big block of gray, green. It's actually going to have some nice gray details down below. Would be cool to compare that to the MG one that we've seen for the Zeta series. Here's the backpack clasps there, which is going to hold everything on. And the back of the shield. The shield being really the eye catch for either the ground or the EZ-8. And some cool variety there for the manipulators. And you've got to love the simplicity that they wrap it up with a tiny little D-plate there. The majority coming on ABC is going to give you some more parts there for the backpack and some very small, thin, relatively soft plastic, which is going to add a nice touch onto the gun. SB6 for the regular circular beam sabers there in a light pink and the old workhorse PC-001 fitting for a workhorse of a Gundam. And maybe somebody at Bandai was pining for the days of old audio cassettes here because it really feels like this belt just came out of an old school cassette tape here. And it looks, it's just incredibly long here. So the way it's going to go is over the shoulders and into the backpack. Can't wait to see this actually in function. And it's a neat kind of new material. The regular seals are going to have six of those large gray stickers up there with some black lining on there. Love that the eyes are going to have black, red, and gray on there, so that's going to break up the monotony of the all-off-white head there. And you've got some scopes and some camera lenses in green and red, looking sharp and definitely not being overly relied on. And for this, I definitely won't be lazy here with the marking seals. A big 08 for the shield, 081 for Shiro, 
triangles galore to go along with E, F, and the G there for ground to go along with that nice solid gray bar and some yellow markings. These were fun to put on the MG. Can't wait to try them on here. How's this for old classic covers here with the 08 MS teams? Easy 8 here, you can see the names in English of all the weapons, including the different varieties of Vulcans there. And it's a neat touch, it's got an improved shield. Well, for me, just give me the decal, that's enough. And inside, four pages, but still love the fact that they got the majority of this on just three plates there, and it's still going to look good for it. You're going to be building up the chest there, which is going to have white, blue, and gray, but not as much gray as I'd like. The backpack there, and the head is going to be putting some seals on all over it. The shoulders should be interesting as they are going to be moving well, it seems, from the box tour. For the lower body, the thing I'm most interested in is cargo pant pockets that hold the beam sabers. I had nothing but trouble with the master grade with that. Hopefully it's going to be fixed here for the high grade. And after just a few pages, you've already got the majority, well, the majority, the entire body put together there. And then it's weapons and shield time. But to the back where it's color splash page time and look at the shots from the back with the, bl the blue feet and the details with the thrusters on the parachute pack there. The chest, yes, it's misleading, but some great looking shots from the anime itself and look at those poses. Back in 2000, kids could only dream of doing stuff like that. There's the beam sabers, hopefully they're going to be working off and here they're showing off the 08th MS team and the ground vehicles. Throwing on the old gym head there, lots of fun play options. And of keen interest here is going to be that belt for the parachute pack, nicely done up here in color. As it looks like you're going to run it through the bottom there, and then you're going to put together the gray parts. And when you do that, you then go and take the belts and wrap them around the shoulders there. Do some complicated tiring though, or tying there, Joseph Joestar style. Can't wait to see though, as the way they're going to actually work. And then it looks you can go and close everything up, and again, you can swap it off for the regular white one if you want to go and carry a big gun instead of a big bag. And something I don't normally pay attention to is the seals and the painting, but hey, great poses yet again. They're going to be showing you the marking seals, but not with the nice layout where they're going to be showing it to you from every angle. More details on the kit that you've already been sold on there. The beam rifle is going to have that small part, or sorry, the machine gun that's going to swing back. Yes, love that CG, and if you're wondering what makes the non-white in this white Gundam, it's white 100% plus sandy yellow, just a drop. Nothing but good things here about the Unbox, including everything that's inside. Simple plates, simple parts, but well carved out there with good colors, the blue, the green, and then that simple white, which is definitely going to help them make them stand out for better or for worse, but it's going to be the features and the functions between the tape and the decals that should make this guy a ton of fun to put together, and you'll probably want three, well, all three from that scene on the cover there by the time you're done. Anyway, of course, stick around to see the parts, the MS, and the final thoughts, and as always, let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. See ya.